so far you might have understood how to analyze data with the help of one way ANCOVA and two way ANCOVA, where the covariate may be 1, 2 or 3 etcetera. Today let us try to understand how to analyze data with the help of three way ANCOVA. In this presentation you will understand another name of three way ANCOVA assumptions underlying three way ANCOVA when to use three way ANCOVA how to write objectives for three way ANCOVA how to formulate hypothesis which statistical technique to use for analyzing the data and how to do the interpretation. Now, three way ANCOVA means there are three variables each having two or more levels. If there are n levels of one variable, m levels of another variable and l levels of the third variable then with one covariate then the name is n by m by l factorial design ANCOVA. You have already understood the assumptions underlying analysis of covariance the same will be used here also. Three way ANCOVA is to be used when the researcher wants to study the effect or influence of three variables and their various interactions on dependent or criterion variable by considering at least one covariate and the data must satisfy the assumptions underlying analysis of variance. Now, how to write objectives for three way ANCOVA with one covariate? The objective should be worded as follows to study the influence of gender, marital status, caste, and their various interactions on chain proneness by considering verbal intelligence as covariate. For the above stated objective the hypothesis should be formulated in the null form as follows. There is no significant influence of gender, marital status, caste and their various interactions on chain proneness by considering verbal intelligence as covariate. As per objective gender has two levels namely males and females, single unmarried and married were the two levels of marital status, there were two levels of caste namely general and others, verbal intelligence was a covariate, chain proneness was the criterion variable. Thus, the data were analyzed with the help of three way ANCOVA or two by two by two factorial design ANCOVA using statistical package for social sciences. The output of SPSS is given in table 1. influence of gender on chain proneness of teachers by taking verbal intelligence as covariate. From table 2, it is evident that the adjusted F value for gender is 0 0.15 which is not significant. 
it shows that the adjusted mean scores of chain proneness of male and female teachers did not differ significantly when verbal intelligence was taken as a covariate. So, there was no significant influence of gender on chain proneness of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of gender on chain proneness of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate is not rejected. It may therefore, be said that gender did not influence significantly the chain proneness when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. Influence of marital status on chain proneness of teachers by taking verbal intelligence as covariate. From table 2, it is evident that the adjusted F value for marital status is 0.01, which is not significant. It shows that adjusted mean scores of chain proneness of single married and married teachers did not differ significantly when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. So, there was no significant influence of marital status on chain proneness of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of marital status on chain proneness of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate is not rejected. It may therefore, be said that chain proneness was found to be independent of marital status of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as a covariate. Influence of caste on chain proneness of teachers by taking verbal intelligence as covariate. The adjusted F value for caste is 0.98, which is not significant. It shows that the adjusted mean scores of chain proneness of general and other teachers did not differ significantly when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. So, there was no significant influence of caste on chain proneness of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of caste on chain proneness of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate is not rejected. It may therefore, be said that chain proneness was found to be independent of caste of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. Influence of interaction between gender and marital status on chain proneness of teachers by taking verbal intelligence as covariate. From table 2, it is evident that the adjusted F value for interaction between gender and marital status is 0.31, which is not significant. It shows that adjusted mean scores of chain proneness of single unmarried and married males and female teachers did not differ significantly when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. Influence of interaction between gender and caste on chain proneness of teachers by taking verbal intelligence as covariate. From table 2, it is evident that the adjusted F value for interaction between gender and caste is 
which is not significant. It shows that adjusted mean scores of chain proneness of male and female teachers belonging to general and other cards did not differ significantly when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. So, there was no significant influence of interaction between gender and caste on chain proneness of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of interaction between gender and caste on chain proneness of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate is not rejected. It may therefore be said that chain proneness was found to be independent of interaction between gender and caste of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. Influence of interaction between marital status and caste on chain proneness of teachers by taking intelligence as covariate. From table 2, it is evident that the adjusted F value for interaction between marital status and caste is 0 0.55 which is not significant. It shows that adjusted mean scores of chain proneness of single unmarried and married teachers belonging to general and other cards did not differ significantly when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. So, there was no significant influence of interaction between marital status and caste on chain proneness of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of interaction between marital status and caste on chain proneness of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate is not rejected. It may therefore be said that chain proneness was found to be independent of interaction between marital status and caste of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. Influence of interaction among gender, marital status and caste on chain proneness of teachers by taking verbal intelligence as covariate. From table 2, it is evident that the adjusted F value for interaction among gender, marital status and caste is 0 0.03 which is not significant. It shows that the adjusted mean scores of chain proneness of single unmarried and married male and female teachers belonging to general and other caste did not differ significantly when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. So, there were no significant influence of interaction among gender marital status and caste on chain proneness of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of interaction among gender, marital status and caste on chain proneness of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate is not rejected. It may therefore be said that chain proneness was found to be independent of interaction among gender, marital status and caste of teachers when verbal intelligence was taken as covariate. So far, you have seen that all the F values were not significant. Let us take Another example where the adjusted F values are significant in some of the cases and not significant in some others. 
the objective should be worded as given below so that the data can be analyzed with the help of three way ANCOVA to study the influence of gender, locale of schools, management of schools and their various interactions on self efficacy by considering resilience as covariate. For this objective, the null hypothesis can be formulated as follows. There is no significant influence of gender, locale of schools, management of schools and their various interactions on self efficacy by considering resilience as covariate. As per objective, gender had two levels namely males and females, urban area and rural area were the two levels of locale of schools. There were two levels of management of schools namely government and private. Resilience was the covariate, self efficacy was the criterion variable. Thus, the data can be analyzed with the help of three way analysis of covariance or two by two by two factorial design analysis of covariance. The output of the SPSS is given in tables 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Now, let us understand how to interpret the results. From the output of the SPSS, the table 8 can be formed and its title should be summary of three way ANCOVA of self efficacy by considering resilience as covariate. influence of gender on self efficacy by taking resilience as covariate. From table 8, it can be seen that the adjusted F value for gender is 28.89 which is significant at 0 0.01 level with D F equal to 1 oblique 291 it indicates that the adjusted mean scores of self efficacy of male and female teachers differ significantly when resilience was taken as covariate. So, there was a significant influence of gender on self efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of gender on self efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate is rejected. Further, the adjusted mean scores of self efficacy of male students is 67.07 .07, which is significantly lower than those of female students whose adjusted mean score of self efficacy is 73.39. It may therefore be said that female students were found to have higher self efficacy as compared to their counterparts of male students when in resilience was taken as covariate. Influence of 
locale of schools on self efficacy by taking resilience as covariate. From table 8, it can be seen that the adjusted F value for locale of schools is 4.67, which is significant at 0 0.05 level with df equal to 1 slash 291. It indicates that the adjusted mean scores of self-efficacy of students studying in schools situated in rural area and urban area differ significantly when resilience was taken as covariate. So, there was a significant influence of locale of schools on self-efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of locale of schools on self-efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate is rejected. Further, the adjusted mean score of self-efficacy of students studying in schools situated in rural area is 71.12, which is significantly higher than those students studying in schools situated in urban area whose adjusted mean score of self-efficacy is 69.34. It may therefore be said that students studying in schools situated in rural area were found to have higher self-efficacy as compared to their counterpart students studying in schools situated in urban area when resilience was taken as covariate. Influence of management of schools on self-efficacy by taking resilience as covariate. From table 8, it can be seen that the adjusted F value for management of schools is 161.82, which is significant at 0 0.01 level with df equal to 1 slash 291. It indicates that the adjusted mean scores of self-efficacy of students studying in government schools and private schools differ significantly when resilience was taken as covariate. So, there was a significant influence of management of schools on self-efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of management of schools on self-efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate is rejected. Further, the adjusted mean scores of self-efficacy of students studying in government schools is 79.19, which is significantly higher than those students studying in private schools whose adjusted mean score of self-efficacy is 61.27. It may therefore be said that students studying in government schools were found to have higher self-efficacy as compared to their counterparts of students studying in private schools when resilience was taken as covariate. Influence of interaction between gender and locale of school on self-efficacy by taking resilience as covariate. From table 8, it is evident 
that the adjusted f value for interaction between gender and locale of schools is 8.28, which is significant at 0 0.01 level with df equal to 1 slash 291. It reflects that the adjusted mean scores of self-efficacy of males and females studying in schools situated in rural and urban areas differ significantly when resilience was taken as covariate. So, there was a significant influence of interaction between gender and locale of schools on self-efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of interaction between gender and locale of schools on self-efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate is rejected. In order to know the trend of influence of interaction between gender and locale of schools on self-efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate, the graph 1 has been plotted. From graph 1, it can be seen that male students studying in schools situated in rural as well as urban areas were found to have self-efficacy to the same extent when resilience was taken as covariate. In case of female students studying in rural area had higher self-efficacy than those studying in schools situated in urban area. Further, in case of students studying in schools situated in rural area, there is a sharp increase in self-efficacy as gender changes from male to female than those studying in schools situated in urban areas by considering resilience as covariate. Influence of interaction between gender and management of schools on self-efficacy by taking resilience as covariate. From table 8, it can be seen that the adjusted f value for interaction between gender and management of schools is 2.77, which is not significant. It reveals that adjusted mean scores of self-efficacy of male and female students studying in government schools and private schools did not differ significantly when resilience was taken as covariate. So, there was no significant influence of interaction between gender and management of schools on self-efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of interaction between gender and management of schools on self-efficacy of students by taking resilience as covariate is not rejected. It may therefore be said that self-efficacy of students was found to be independent of interaction between gender and management of schools when resilience was taken as covariate. Influence of interaction between locale of schools and management of schools on self-efficacy by taking resilience as covariate. From table 8, it is evident that the adjusted f value for interaction between locale of schools and management of schools 
is 18.67 which is significant at 0 0.01 level with d f equal to 1 slash 291. It reflects that adjusted mean scores of self efficacy of students studying in government schools and private schools situated in rural and urban areas differ significantly when resilience was taken as covariate. So, there was a significant influence of interaction between locale of schools and management of schools on self efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of interaction between locale of schools and management of schools on self efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate is rejected. In order to know the trend of influence of interaction between locale of schools and management of schools on self efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate the graph 2 has been plotted. From graph 2 it can be seen that irrespective of locale of schools students studying in government schools had higher self efficacy as compared to those of private schools. Further, there is a slight increase in self efficacy of students of government schools as locale of schools changes from rural area to urban area. On the other hand, there is a decline in self efficacy of students of private schools as locale of schools changes from rural area to urban area. Influence of interaction among gender, locale of schools and management of schools on self efficacy by taking resilience as covariate. From table 8, it can be seen that the adjusted F value for interaction among gender, locale of schools and management of schools is 16.46, which is significant at 0 0.01 level with d f equal to 1 slash 291. It reflects that the adjusted mean scores of self efficacy of male and female students studying in government schools and private schools situated in rural and urban areas differ significantly when resilience was taken as covariate. So, there was a significant influence of interaction among gender, locale of schools and management of schools on self efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate. Thus, the null hypothesis that there is no significant influence of interaction among gender, locale of schools and management of schools on self efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate is rejected. In order to know the trend of influence of interaction among gender, locale of schools and management of schools on self efficacy of students when resilience was taken as covariate the graph 3 has been plotted. From graph 3 in case of students studying in government schools it can be observed that with the change in gender from male to female 
self efficacy of students studying in government schools situated in rural and urban area increased. Female students studying in government schools situated in rural as well as urban area had higher self efficacy as compared to those of male students. Lastly, female students studying in government schools situated in urban area had higher self efficacy than those studying in government schools situated in rural area. In case of private schools, there is a sharp increase in self efficacy of students studying in schools situated in rural area as the gender changes from male to female, while such trend was absent in case of males and females studying in schools situated in urban area. Male students studying in private schools situated in both rural and urban area had self efficacy to the same extent, but female students studying in private schools situated in rural area were found to have higher self efficacy than those studying in private schools situated in urban area. From these graphs, it can be said that female students studying in government schools situated in urban area had higher self efficacy than those studying in government schools situated in rural area. On the other hand, female students studying in private schools situated in rural area were found to have higher self efficacy than those studying in private schools situated in urban area.